We have a special guest. It is Mr. Chris Lee, spelled C-R-E-E-E-S <laughs> Lee. Lee, common spelling. He can be found on Instagram at Chris Art. At C R E E E S A R T. Check him out. He is a Marvel Comics artist who is responsible for many awesome titles and artwork for many awesome titles in the Marvel lineup, such as the newly released Tiger Division. So, Chris, Tom <laughs> and I you. have been talking about this. We are so excited that you are here. Did you know that you wanted to be a comic book artist as a kid? So, I originally wanted to be in animation. Uh huh. Because uh, I grew up watching a lot of like the, you know, TV shows, like cartoons, like the Batman animated series, a lot of cartoon awesome. art stuff. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, it, I, want, I drew a lot as a kid. I didn't know I wanted to be in the arts, like vi visual arts until late high school. What would be like one of the first like superheroes that you really attached to and felt like the connection with? Probably Batman. Batman? Batman, because the animation, the animated series was just like something I watched a lot. And um, is this the one with the, I think Mark Hamill was the Joker? Yeah, yeah the Bruce Finn version. Yeah, 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 that's good stuff. Um, and then like the Justice League, and then Justice League Unlimited. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are like things I grew up watching. Yeah, and then my high school friend introduced me to like Jim Lee. Right. And then he was like, oh, there's a, there's a Korean guy that draws comics. And he's like, really good. <laughs> and then and he was like one of the <laughs> most popular <laughs> yeah. artists he was of the big. 90s. Right. And how much would you say that the training that you got in college, and how much did that affect how your skill set is right now because I'm looking at this right here and you know so, some <laughs> your stuff is so good what what did you learn in school that got you to this point Ooh, there's a, a lot of things I learned uh, I think one of the most important things in college that um, had one of the biggest impacts in my like abilities to draw was like the anatomy anatomy classes mm -hmm. um, I never really had proper anatomy classes before then and mm -hmm. that was like live nude model drawings and stuff like every week. It's a lot of uh, practice drawing like their muscles or just like people in different angles, mm -hmm. poses and it was honestly just kind of trying like a lot of repetition and then just uh, getting used to drawing like a human body and you know in comics you have to draw people in different angles, poses like multiple times on one page mm -hmm. and so I think that helped a tremendous amount in my like ability to draw people. So you know we're, we we focus heavily in fountain pens and you know we're into art and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I've always done is when I drew or myself or when Tom draws, we use fountain pens to, to ink. yeah to ink and stuff. Now when we were chatting at one point in time, you said you don't use fountain pens, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What was the reason for that? Um, there's a couple reasons. One of them is there. It's unpredictable to know when it's gonna like do the splatter, like when it gets caught on the paper, mm -hmm. and it makes like a little like splatter. Mm -hmm. um, there's that. There's um, the ink takes a lot longer to dry, mm -hmm. and then I think cleaning constantly cleaning the tip. Mm -hmm. Actually, it might be different because the fountain pens that I would use is a dip pen, mm -hmm. so you would constantly have to dip in the ink and then clean it and then mm -hmm. yeah. I will tell you from my own personal experience and that's how I had gotten a first taste of what a nib was like yeah. was was through the lens of doing it for like comic book art when I was in my teenage years yeah and I ran into the same issue yeah you were dipping in a, in a bottle of Higgins fountain pen black ink <laughs> or whatever and these nibs were just they're super fine and what happens is if accidentally if you go up the wrong way it creates a spatter it just like the the tines just kind of like trip over their own feet and then they just and then yeah. just like it, I didn't mean to do that but it kind of looks cool but it's not really appropriate in yeah. US right. context it's like a, so but then when I tried real fountain pens that mm -hmm. either contain their own ink and have like the iridium tip uh, nibs and stuff like that I was like oh well this is a lot different yeah this isn't this isn't like I remember with like my first experience with that where it was just kind of like a, a haphazard mess of, of, of like getting in trouble with that right ink splattering everywhere do uh, the fountain pens have flexible tips some well? of them do oh really some of them do yeah so the ones that have flexible tips are they generally are more money. Yeah. Like for example, the the flexible tip fountain. Like pen. the Pilot Falcon. Oh, like wow. this is a Pilot Falcon. This is a Pilot Falcon. Yeah. This pen here is has a very flexible tip. It's really? a 14 karat gold tip. Oh wow. Yeah. So I feel like I can't even touch it. <laughs>
Yeah, so it, so it, it does it does bend a bit. Okay. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So is that an extra fine or a fine? It is an extra fine. Extra fine. So it gives you a very fine. It doesn't give you the spatter. As long as you know that when you're on the downstroke is when you do the pressure, right? Yeah. Not on the upstroke, right? What's you, the upstroke? So, like for example, this is a downstroke, right? If I'm writing my name R, mm -hmm. right? The downstroke is going down. Yeah. As I go sideways, I would not press down, press, okay. right? It's only going to spread uh, going okay. down, right? So a lot of people like to use this for inking and stuff like that. Yeah. You use micron pens. These are yeah. micron pens. Can you talk to me about? Why you use these? Like I'm looking at these band aids that are on here. Uh -huh. Like, what's the what's the story with these pens? Why so do they have band aids? I tend to grip my pens like really tight for some reason, mm -hmm. and so it just helps it have a thicker um, width. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like holding on so tight with my fingers. Also, it's like a non-slip kind of thing, so it's just uh, a little bit more cushion. I see. So it's like if I'm pressing, you know, tightly on this pen, there's actually some. Like give, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like, yeah, it's just more for cushion and comfort. And I'm seeing that these have different tip sizes. Yeah, right. So I use the PN. Uh, I think it's a plastic nib. Mm -hmm. um, it's a newer one, and it allows you to kind of get like some line variation. Mm, okay. uh, not like these, because um, the other microns, they're just very like they just, just have like a fine. nib. Yeah, they just have like one line width. Okay. Um, and yeah. this is your pencil case right here. Do you mind taking yeah. your, oh, no, yeah, your, sure. your tools I out and let's took see? took the main ones, oh, but I, I mean, that's a lot of the same stuff. Okay, this okay. one for I've mm -hmm. used for a very long time is the Pentel Graph 1000. Mm. I joke around that this is the pencil of destiny mm -hmm. and it's almost like I've lent this to a lot of famous artists because oh, wow, they awesome. usually the bigger names they don't carry their own pencils and then I'm like sitting there at the cons and then I'm in a company uh, called Comic Sketch Art they they're my art reps for like conventions and stuff mm -hmm. and we have like some of the biggest names like Greg Capullo um, oh nice. wow and like, Spawn Mark Silvestri is Yo, part of our one group one of my favorites yeah uh, Frank Miller is part of our group oh wow and so we have like a bunch of artists and usually when they're at these cons and trying to do sketches they don't have like their own pencils so my company like my friends know to come up to me and ask because I have this pencil and I feel like if I let them use it I kind of steal their powers oh right nice. kind of like a space jam that's how it works know? right yes absolutely so, so yeah what, what is the process like let's say I you were gonna <laughs> schedule sketch schedule sketch something right now uh -huh. do you start with a different pencil and okay then move? so um, I do have these lead holders mm -hmm. um, basically the same. My brother just got me this one. Um, but this is more like, I have H lead in here, mm -hmm. and so it's very light. Mm -hmm. um, so I could just get like a basic sketch down. Is that the two millimeter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then I will go in with this one. I think this is a Kurotoga. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, this one's just HB, I mm -hmm. believe. And then I'll just start detailing with this. And that's how I'll like, get my pencil sketch down. Mm -hmm. um, I do have this one, which is a 03. Mm -hmm. um, I use this when I did final pencils. So like when I was doing the pencils for like Tiger Division mm -hmm. and I had to do like detailed pencils for the inker, I would use this as like almost like the inking tool, mm -hmm. but in pencils. And is that a softer lead? This yeah. is also, yeah, also softer as in like, um, it'll go darker. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's not so it's not an H lead. It's like probably it's like a two B. Oh, two yeah. B. Okay. Oh. The zero three would help me get like the really fine details. Um, yeah. And then and I like the Kurutogas because they when you when you're using them like every time you lift the the pencil, yeah, they ro it rotates the yeah. lead so it doesn't like get that flat edge on the lead. That, you that get would that make thinner the, line. Yeah, it always yeah. keeps a very thin line. You know, the reason we, we want to get into the tools and I want to thank our sponsors, Gold Spot Pens and Luxury Brands of America, is because. We just want to, we brought some stuff from toys for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Starting with the, the reveal of the Pilot Falcon. Yes. Right, the Pilot Falcon has an MSRP of, what is it? Are you gonna test me right now? Because I yes. don't have this <laughs> encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge. Right. It, it, I think they're a, about, they're over 250. Right, they're about there, $250. And, it, and these are very popular pens for artists in the fountain pen okay. industry. We're not telling you to use this when you're doing your stuff but if you're messing around yeah you know this is one of the pens that you brought for him right yes oh, right? Wow, thank you. but the thing is a pen is useless without ink 
Oh, that it is. But then also too is that we had the pencil. This is from uh, Bryce had sent this. This is a, a platinum pro use pencil. Platinum makes great pencils. Platinum is a Japanese company, right? Oh, this looks really cool. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know what kind of lead it is. I don't know much about pencils or anything like that. But Bryce is our is our buddy from Luxury Brands of America. He's a distributor for a lot of brands. Everybody who's watching this or listening, they, like, they know who with Bryce this. is. They know who Luxury Brands is. You may not. But this is a pencil that we hope that you can find useful oh, thank you when, so much. when doing your amazing art. And over here, what is that, Tom? This is the newest uh, release of ink from Platinum. It is the Chukuro. I think it's pronounced that way, but it's a it's the blackest of black inks. Oh, wow. So, and it's also it's also permanent too. Archival, permanent? archival type permanent comes in a very fancy looking box. And wow. it's supposedly more black than the regular platinum carbon black, which already has kind black. of a reputation of use with artists mm -hmm. like carbon black does. But when you compare both of these blacks together, this is even like darker. Oh, wow. of a, right. of a black so it's too. so black and it's permanent, meaning once it dries and sets into the paper, it, it won't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So like if you're writing checks or you're doing something like art, you have to let it dry because otherwise if you erase over it and it's not dry, you know what happens. Yeah. It's going to smear. But this one is so black, it's it's like it'll suck. Like if we open the bottle, it'll suck in all the light <laughs> and then we'll just get sucked into infinity. Is it a matte finish or I don't know. Well, we're, we're probably going to see, right? Okay. Are right. We gonna, Maybe. We could do like a little bit of like a I demonstration. Like a demo. yeah. yeah. So this is what you would fill that fountain pen with. Yes. Right? So when you're not doing a page that can get screwed up, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to just mess around, that's there for you. What else, what else we got in there? The uh, other thing on here would be the paper aspect, oh, which wow. would be, this is a endless, they call it, I think the uh, creative block. Yes, the creative block. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the creative block and it's a tear away notepad that's got found pen friendly paper on it. So this is also so it's blank. resistant to ink, it's not gonna bleed through or ghost and stuff. Exactly. So yeah, let's get rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> but this may be it's it's got like a little bit more of a tooth than let's say a smooth Bristol board mm -hmm. type of thing or like a typical comic page would I think. Yeah. But it handles all the fountain penning. So you could like let's say do a sketch and then do like washes over it and the page is not gonna buckle at all. Oh, okay. It's gonna stay pretty smooth and, mm -hmm. and fairly yeah. So it's a it, this is a it's pretty nice. It's a it's a good solid paper for, for mostly for fountain pen use, but yeah. you know, for, for illustrations I think it works well too. We're gonna we're gonna do a draw off, right? But we can't make things too easy for you. Right. Why so, not? Huh? <laughs> <Why not? laughs> so, we're gonna ju we're, maybe you could rock this. Or yeah, maybe. I can definitely use these tools. Yeah, and then give it, give it a shot. I brought my pencil. This is my my personal pencil that I use. If you don't mind, can you use this one? Yeah, sure. So I can steal your. <laughs> What's that? Steal your talent. <laughs> I actually think that if I use it, uh, it'll like. Maybe it'll make you better. Maybe it'll make you better. But <laughs> you'll I'm you'll use all the talent that it's stolen. Like I, my concern is if I use this one, and then you get it back, you're gonna be sitting there drawing, and then you're just gonna have like spasms. Like you'll have taken my ADHD. Also, also he tends to be very like heavy-handed when it comes to using oh, things. No, so no, all of a sudden he's gonna hand that back to you. It's gonna have like a smooshed like point. Something like a bent. It's just gonna like be very careful. Crease is gonna take us through a drawing and. I pick Captain America, obviously, because you know he reminds me a lot about myself. Uh, I'm just kidding. That's not true. <laughs> okay, so if you look at this paper, it's it's a very thick cardstock type paper. This is what he does his commissions on. So normally at a at a comic con or a show, he'll draw something and then he'll sell the drawing. I'm gonna draw this, and I'm probably gonna owe somebody money <laughs> by the end of it. <laughs> okay. And I have the Uniball Kurutoga, and that's a 0.5 millimeter. Right. And that one is actually belongs to Tom. That's yours. As it you does. Yes. Yeah. Anyone could, would know that just based on the color that Tom likes yeah, to choose. Much. I will okay. let you borrow this, but this doesn't suck the talent out of people. So <laughs> there's nothing in there. <laughs> I'll just start with like a circle. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if we're going to do like a three quarters view, mm -hmm. um, I kind of figure out the direction that he's looking at, so I'm going to make it so he's facing left. Okay. Um, and then I'll draw this like bisecting line a little bit further than the circle, because 
That's where the chin. And this is where the anatomy yes. concept comes in, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the face has a lot of uh, general like mathematical rules. Mm -hmm. And so when you have the top of the head here and the, the bottom of the head here, mm -hmm. when you kind of get that half, mm -hmm. half point, that's kind of where the eyes will go. The half point of the square. Yeah. Okay. Or half the half point of this Y length. I if see. That makes sense. Okay. And then you get this half length, and then draw that line. That's usually where the nose goes. So from the eyes to the chin, you get that half. Mm-hmm. And that's usually. Is that, that right? Yeah. And then half of the nose to the chin is usually a little bit above a, a little above the half line. Is usually <laughs> the mouth. Okay. And then I'll kind of just lay out the eyes here. So eyes are going to be the, the halfway, center, yeah. that halfway, se that the, center yeah. mark there. Okay. This line Sorry. right here? Yes. Okay. So I can see why anatomy is so important, because without proper anatomy, your neck's gonna have like too many muscles or anything, yeah. stuff like that. It's like you're drawing people, so you need to be able to draw people right. in their various postures and stuff. Yeah. And especially with like superheroes where their muscles are very like, exaggerated. Right. If you don't know what the muscles are that you're exaggerating, then. Well, typically I just look in the mirror and then, uh, you know, go off what I see. You're, you're, you're your own figure drawing, like, model. <laughs> just, just Should we start inking it too? Well, so, so, but I have a question. Yeah. Do you see how thick these lines are? Yeah, that's the, yeah. When um, we ink it, what are we doing with that? You're, so, the way I think the mind kind of works in, like, that area is you'll see the, all these different lines and you're using... Like if you think of each line kind of like this, mm -hmm. you'll you're using parts of every line that you drew to make it's like the one path mm -hmm. that you want. So I think when I t when I sketch a lot, I kind of just end up seeing the one that the one that I want. I yeah. See. Should I try that pen? Oh or? yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah. Do, yeah, adding another challenge. Oh, so. Did you ink it up for him or? I have not yet. Okay. We'll do so, a little. We could do like a little demonstration. Oh, as wow. you'll as you'll come to know, when you play around with this converter, it's not the greatest converter. It's this is basically what'll suck up the ink. Okay. So, it's like a crack. What's the converter? So this is so this is this piece right here. Okay. I'll take it out. So this is the Con Forty converter, and it has little ball agitators in there. You see, like the little uh -huh. metal balls that are in there, so that it keeps the ink towards the front part of the converter as you're oh, writing wow. with it. Um, and it has this little piston twist and on there that advances then the piston head that's inside of which creates the, the suction. syringe yeah. suction effect for when you have it attached here. Okay. So you have it attached nice and tight here. You would bring the converter all the way down so that it's at the forward end of the nib. Then you have your bottle of ink. This bottle of ink, I was just looking at the instructions before, it actually has a um, it has an inner reservoir inside. So what you would then be able to do is you don't have to worry about kind of like angling it at a certain way. There's an inner reservoir that if you turn it upside down and then shake it, it'll fill that inner reservoir. Oh, wow. So that you don't have to worry about like, dip. yeah, see it's like right there on oh, the inside. Okay. It's, like it's, it's a little askew, but... Is it like a loose... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a loose item so that you can actually pluck it out if you wanted to, but you would use it to be able to... And it's got like the little cutouts on the side, so that's where the ink flows in from. So then you would take the the found pen nib, you dip it in so that it gets com search, submerged completely there. And you see I got okay, a little yeah. bit of ink the first go at it. But really what the, the complaint that most people have about this uh, converter is that it's not very good oh, in terms of up. like getting yeah. filled up all the way. Okay. So that is fully inked, well not fully inked, but it's got enough ink enough. in it yeah. just to be able to do what we need to do with it. This you could probably write with for what, like a, about like a week or so, depending yeah. on yeah. or draw, or you could probably do like a whole entire page of inks with it, or mm -hmm. several I would say, because it, it lasts a while. Yeah. So then you would just wipe down the handle. 
Yeah, because yeah, okay. yeah, okay. like you could get, you could potentially get some ink that's on their part here, but you don't mind being that you're used to playing around with ink. You don't mind yeah. some ink getting on your fingers. Oh, yeah. no, no, but you just want to make sure that you don't have like an excessive amount of it that then would transfer to drawing somehow. You yeah. Know? So that's where we just cleaned it up a little bit, and it is now good to go. We'll put the the barrel screws back on. And then, oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. A lot of space to fill up. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, it's definitely not something that you would fill with a large amount of space. Yeah, it probably would be right. something that you would use more to create the accent lines oh. and like and like the more of the line work aspect of yeah. it, where you could do some variability in, in, in terms of like putting a little bit of pressure on the nib and creating that line variation. Yeah. So it'd be a, it's something similar to what then you would use with the, 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 the PN. PN, yeah. It's like my hand is having a seizure. I can't keep a straight, steady. That's also part of the skill, I'm assuming, you know, just being able to be steady-handed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, the trick is to draw the lines quicker. Oh, really? Yeah, because if you take your time to draw a straight line, it'll be shakier. Oh, so if okay. You can, yeah, if you can draw it quicker, usually it helps. There's also a trick where if it's a <clears throat> like a longer straight line, mm -hmm. a lot of people draw from their wrist, and they'll try to draw like, a straight line this way, mm -hmm. but if you draw from pivoting from your elbow, mm -hmm. that line will look straighter. Oh, um, okay. Or be straighter. <sighs> All right, so let's hold up our drawings for <laughs> everybody watching. Is, it, is that camera? Yeah. Show us up. Show us how. Oh wait, Chris, you have to. Have oh Chris yeah, <laughs> sure. Cool. Okay. Cool. okay. That was our interview with the illustrious Kreese Lee. The illustrious illustrator. The illustrious illustrator. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very nice. Listen, mm -hmm. Kreese, oh. thank you very much for thank you. being here. We thank really you. appreciate it. We appreciated the tutorial on how to draw a bust of Captain America. And not just that, taking the time out, knowing as busy as you are, many pages you gotta draw, I really appreciate you coming down here. Tom really appreciates it, and our viewers really appreciate it. So thank you. Keep your eyes out. Can you just tell everybody how they can connect with you on social okay. media and whatnot? Um, I have Instagram, Twitter, uh, <coughs> an old YouTube channel, Twitch, that I haven't streamed on in a while, but hopefully it will get back on. But it's all Cree Stars, uh, C-R-E-E-S-A-R-T. -E -E can you also talk about the titles that you're working on now? Sure. Or what yeah, they can, yeah. where they can find your work? Um, I have a book. Uh, I did one issue of the Moon Knight annual issue, and it has Moon Knight versus Teguki. That's coming out August 29th, mm -hmm. I believe, so it could be soon, or just yeah, at the end of this month. You know, if anybody has any like art questions, you know, I'm always happy to answer if I can, whenever I have time. Uh, just like send me in the message on Instagram. Okay, cool. And make sure you check out Tiger Division. It's a mini series available at Marvel Comics. You can purchase them on any comic book app or you can go into your local comic book store and request it. Tiger Division is a great title. Oh, I there's a um, trade paperback coming out in September, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have one through five all in one book. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those can be found Amazon. I saw it on Amazon listed yeah. for pre-order. Yeah, I think it's a great title. I think the art is fantastic. And once again, Creasley, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for all the goodies. Yeah. I really appreciate it.